Hi everyone, welcome back to Stethoscope 360. In today's video, we will decode the most time critical treatment in neurology that is stroke thrombolysis. By the end of this video, you will know what is stroke thrombolysis, who is eligible for that, what are the contraindications and how it is done. So let's dive into it. But before starting this video, three important things. First, see this video till the end. And if you have come for the first time on this channel, then do subscribe this channel. And also there is an interesting quiz on this topic waiting for you in the description box. So also go and solve it. So friends, without wasting much time, let's start the video. So what is stroke thrombolysis? Stroke thrombolysis means dissolving the blood clot that has stopped blood flow to the brain or in other words, reopening the occluded artery in acute ischemic stroke. The aim here is to restart the perfusion before irreversible damage occurs to the brain because we know that time is brain. Every minute lost leads to the death of millions of neurons. So stroke thrombolysis is nothing but reopening the occluded artery by dissolving the clot. So first let's understand the pathophysiology. So when a artery is blocked, in the center of the ischemic area, there is a core where all the neurons are already damaged. But surrounding the core, there is an area called as penumbra where neurons are still salvageable. If you recognize stroke early and do thrombolysis early, then the neurons in the penumbra can be saved. So this is the pathophysiology or idea behind doing stroke thrombolysis. So now which type of patients qualify for stroke thrombolysis? So first there has to be a clinical diagnosis of acute ischemic stroke. Second thing is that patient should come to you within 4.5 hours of start of symptoms. Third, there should be no hemorrhage on CT scan. And fourth, the age of the patient should be more than 18 years. Only after these things, you can go for stroke thrombolysis. But before that, you have to exclude or rule out the contraindications. So what are the contraindications? The contraindications can be divided into two types. First, the absolute contraindication, where in any case, you cannot go for stroke thrombolysis. And second, there are relative contraindications where you can decide the treatment case by case. So what are the absolute contraindication? Hemorrhage on CT scan. You cannot go for stroke thrombolysis here. Recent intracranial surgery or if there is a trauma or if there was a stroke. Recent means within three months. Then known intracranial tumor, AV malformation or aneurysm. Any active internal bleeding, if the BP is more than 185 by 110, if the platelet count is less than 1 lakh and if the glucose is less than 50 or more than 400. These are all the absolute contraindications for stroke thrombolysis. Now what are the relative contraindications? The relative contraindications are first any recent major surgery or GI bleed. Recent means less than 21 days. Second is pregnancy. Third, seizures at the onset. And fourth is recent myocardial infarction. So these are the absolute and the relative contraindications for stroke thrombolysis. So now we have come to the most important part of the video. That is how exactly the stroke thrombolysis is done or what are the choice of drugs. So the gold standard is Ultiplase or recombinant tissue plasminogen activator. This drug is approved by most of the reputed societies. The other drug or the emerging treatment is with tenectoplase. So first we will see the Ultiplase. So what is the dose? The dose is 0.9 milligram per kg. And maximum you can give up to 90 milligram. So how this uh, drug is given? The 10% is given IV bolus 
over one minute and the remaining 90 percent is given by infusion over one hour so for example if the weight of the patient is 50 kilograms so total drug will be 50 into 0.9 that is 45 milligram so of this 10 percent that is 4.5 milligram you, you will give as IV bolus in one minute and the remaining drug that is 40.5 milligram. This much drug you will give by infusion over one hour. Now the other drug that is tenectoplase. The dose of the tenectoplase is 0.25 milligram per kg. Maximum you can give up to 25 milligram. And this drug is given as a single bolus injection. So, for example, if the weight of the patient is 50 kilograms, the dose will be 50 into 0.25, that will be 12.5 milligram. So, 12.5 milligram drug you will give as a single bolus injection. So, in this way, for stroke thrombolysis, you have two choice. First is Ultiplase, which is a gold standard, and the other uh, option is with Tenectoplase. So, when it comes to the stroke thrombolysis, what matters is the efficiency of the system. From the time when patient comes to the hospital to when he gets the injection, that time is called as door to needle time, and the AHA recommends that this time should be less than 60. So these 60 minutes are also called as the golden hour of stroke. So what is this door to needle protocol? So at zero time, when patient comes to the hospital, we consider it as a zero time. So this is a zero time. So by the time of 10 minutes, all the necessary protocols of history taking, examination, sending basic investigation, all this has to be done within 10 minutes. Then by 15 minutes, the neurology team should be alerted. Then by 25 minutes, CT scan of the patient should be done. Then by 45 minutes, the CT scan should be interpreted and before 60 minutes, the patient should get the injection for stroke thrombolysis. So this is the door to needle protocol that should be ideally followed in all the hospital so that the stroke thrombolysis will be effective and patient will get that treatment in time. So now some words about blood pressure and glucose management during thrombolysis. So before and after thrombolysis, blood pressure has to be properly controlled. So before thrombolysis, the blood pressure should be less than 185 by 110. And after thrombolysis, after thrombolysis, it should be maintained less than 180 by 105 at least for the period of 24 hours. And you should avoid aggressive lowering. Aggressive lowering of the and blood pressure should be avoided. And what type of drugs you can use? You can use labetalol or nicardipine to lower the blood pressure. So this is about maintaining the blood pressure. And about glucose, you should avoid the extremes and the glucose should be maintained between 140 to 180. So now what you will monitor during stroke thrombolysis and what can be the complications. So what you will monitor, you will monitor the neurological status of patient with Glasgow coma scale. Then you will monitor the blood pressure and you will also monitor if there is any bleeding from any site. If patient complains of headache, or if there is a vomiting of or if there is decrease in the Glasgow coma score, then you will immediately stop thrombolysis 
and take patient to CT scan to rule out intracranial hemorrhage. You will not give any antiplatelet or any anticoagulant drug to the patient for the period of 24 hours after thrombolysis. And the main complication of stroke thrombolysis is intracranial hemorrhage and this is seen in about 6% of patients. Apart from this, there can be also bleeding from any other side and also remember that in spite of giving stroke thrombolysis treatment, there can be reocclusion of the artery and reappearance of the symptoms of stroke. So in this way, you have to monitor the patient of stroke thrombolysis. So are there any options if patient comes to us after 4.5 hours or if patient comes to us and we exactly don't know the onset time of symptoms like in wake up strokes. So in those cases, we have extended window. The time of 4.5 hours is extended here to 9 hours. But here, patient has to undergo MRI or CT perfusion scan and according to the report, the neurologist will take a call if that patient can go for thrombolysis. So to summarize, recognize stroke early, scan fast, thrombolyze safely and save the penumbra. So next time when you are in the emergency room, always remember door to needle time of 60 minutes which is also called as golden hour of stroke. If you find today's video helpful, hit the like button, share with your friends and subscribe this channel for more such clinical videos. And also don't forget to solve the quiz that is there in the description box. See you in the next video. Till then, thank you.